Just got a couple quick announcements. Uh, there are great shows here every weekend at Helium. Upcoming is J.P. Sears, Kevin Nealon, Maria Bamford. Uh, every Tuesday is the open mic. And then if you guys want to try comedy, if you're very funny, there's the funniest person contest. You sign up, you get to bring all your friends and uh, you know show everybody how funny you are. Uh, or you don't have to do that at all. You can just come and watch. Or you can enjoy summer this summer. Who the fuck cares, you know? Either way. Uh, with all that out of the way, you guys ready for your headliner? Yeah? yeah. yeah. SNL, Netflix, he doesn't need really any introduction. Give it up. Norm McDonald, everyone. Yeah. Here, you know what I mean? Like, 
And uh, I don't know, I don't know. One guy I had, he said a thing. <laughs> Do you remember a guy that he says that you don't know what we're, uh, who you're supposed to hate? Like it's too confusing. The because you're not, a, you know, I don't know every racial epithet. You know, I try. <laughs> I try to keep up, but I don't know every racial epithet. So uh, there's one guy who says to me, he was a, a doorman, he goes, uh, you know what the problem is in the world nowadays? I said, is that a group of people? <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right. You didn't have the the head there, buddy. I said, what, what group of people is it anyway? He goes, what a cute no one. Well, as I do is a goddamn brindle head. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, yeah? Because <laughs> I have to be told who to hate. I can't, I, I don't know brindle. So I looked up brindle, and it was a weird definition. I never, it didn't have any way to be on someone's head, and uh, I didn't know. You know, I couldn't tell. And it still plays me this day, because part of me thinks, what if they really are the problem? <laughs> too hard, you know, not to be racist, you know what I mean? Like, they'll go, uh, they'll go, I don't care if my guy's black or white or brown, yellow, green. I'm like, whoa, green, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's such a thing as being too progressive. A green person, clearly a Martian. You gotta shoot him on sight. Because if you don't shoot him, he dematerializes you because... They, and their guns are better, you know. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, dematerializing, and I'll tell you this, what is a draft here? <laughs> man, I'm an old man. I'll tell you something. You start talking about drafts? <laughs> How does this look? Is this a good look? your hair completely white. That's a signal. He's telling you, you know, get your affairs in order, you know. <laughs> See, I've killed your hair. Your hair is dead. It's white. It's dead white. Skyline of uh, you know, Portland. Isn't that something? It's like a, it's like the window to outside. Pretend, you know, you're not supposed to pretend that, and yet the ocean comes right up to the front. You know that's not right. I just noticed across the bridge is the Helium Comedy Club. <laughs> We all know that, of course, you know, uh, two uh, two places can't uh, you know can't exist. To, uh, <laughs> be the same place. You know, <laughs> thermo, thermodynamic law. <laughs> Everybody. 
sexuality is the same, every sexuality is the same, and all that. Here's something, though, that you ne I've never heard. I don't know if this is, uh, this, this would seem uh, odd on the ear if I heard this. I would, uh, you know what I would love? I would, I would really like to make love to you up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get equality for everybody. And, and uh, here's the way I see it, just on the grand scale. I think there's two big, big problems that are finally being addressed in the society. Now, one problem is that we live in, a, in an evil patriarchy that, that uh, uh, benefits no one except uh, straight white males. That's a big, big problem. Now, here's another big, big problem. I'm a straight white man. <laughs>
Uh, the airplane in here. Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> and uh, what a what a trip that one that time. Boy. There was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, turbulence. It was, it was frightening, you know. And, uh, we got scared. I always uh, I was flying in the uh, in the uh, exit row. And the extra rows are great because uh, you know you get extra leg room and they're free. You know all you have to do to get them is lie. You have to lie. You have to lie to the uh, stewardess comes up to you. Not stewardess, but uh, flight attendant comes up to you. Words change. You know what I mean? When I was young, if you were a flight attendant and you were a lady, uh, we called you a stewardess. And if you were a flight attendant and you were a gentleman, we called you a, uh, well, you know, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even, I didn't say it. I don't know what you guys think. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Um, but anyways, you've got the, you know, they come up and they go, yes. Um, we got, we're having kind of the exit row. Would you mind, uh, uh, you know, if we crash and the white black smoke, you know, races down to choke the life out of you, would you mind just letting other people out first? And then, you know, and then I say, we need it verbally because that's binding somehow, you know. <laughs> so you go, yes! You know, sometimes you say, I, I tend to lie, I over lie, yes! You know. <laughs> yes, yes, I would like to do that. I was going to ask you if I could do that. <laughs> it's kind of coincidental, all right? I was going to ask you. Huh. I think it's well worth the extra three inches to just you after, please. <laughs> I'll scrabble down the wing for my life after everyone else. <laughs> but you know, they give you little warnings, but they're meaningless, you know. They go, oh, the oxygen mask will fall down. Make sure you breathe it into yours before your child. You go, well, that was my plan. I'm fucking plan. <laughs> and then they go, oh, and by the way, your seat cushion is a boat. <laughs> They say a flotation device, which of course is no such thing. A flotation device is a boat. <laughs> but they realize how retarded it would sound to pretend your seat was a boat. <laughs> but of course, it never happens. You know, you never go like, oh, the plane went down in the Pacific Ocean. But don't worry, folks. Uh, you know, everybody's floating around in their boats. <laughs> The plane goes down at such a speed. This is what stuns me about, about uh, physics. <laughs> the plane hits at whatever it hits, 900,000 miles an hour, and it obliterates. It, it just turns everything to stuff. Like, if you're a human being, you're no longer, like, you're, you're, you're dematerialized, like the Martian's gun, you know? You're stuck. Like, they can show a picture. They have an airplane, right? They'll just take a, a helicopter and take videos of it, and people take pictures. You know why? Because you never see anyone. Like, you can't take a picture of a car accident because people are like, like that. But 370 people on a plane just take pictures, and no one's like, there's no one there. It's, it's stuff. It's just a plane load of stuff. That's all they find. <laughs> Oh, the remains of the day. <laughs> remains of sand. You know? <laughs> and it's not like they're gonna find. And of course, your relatives whine your remains, you know, because that they, they just they need closure, and that's part of closure. You know what I mean? They go, God, oh my God, I can't, I can't get to sleep. I've been awake for four days. I, every time I go to sleep. I, I think a young Sam in his last moments of the horror he must have gone through. If only I could see his remains. <laughs> <laughs> then I could finally have a good night's sleep. You know, I used to get this whole thing behind me if I could see.
see a bag of this for me. <laughs> a bag. Get your exact remaining on there, not gonna go. Oh, look at that silver blonde hair by golly, I bet that's Hank. This is did somebody have a piece of her uh, wrist bone earlier? Let's put that together here over here. They got no time for that, man. They've got a job to do, they gotta get the stuff, get going. Ah. <laughs> hey, lights burn, let's go, boys. You know, they find your ID. Go, look at this here, it says, uh. Fella named Norm, go by Norm Magnall, says weigh 190 pounds. Shovel 190 pounds of stuff. <laughs> Let's go. Say that to his mother.
<laughs> and the rest of them a certain period in uh, American history where everybody just pussy whipped like crazy. <laughs> 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 But I'll tell you though, it's a it's a wonderful day. It's gonna be a gonna be an election coming up here in the United States of America. It's really gonna be something. And I heard today, uh, I don't know if you've heard, it's pretty big news. Uh, this upcoming election is gonna be the most important one. <laughs> They come out and they tell you they're, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of prison reform, that's a big one. <laughs> they got to they gotta change that around. Because, uh, because, here's the problem though, you know, like a thing like prison reform. It's not the prisoners that are behind this, it's people like them that are doing it for the prisoners, like do-gooders, you know what I mean? They're, they've never been in a prison. How could they be? They're do-gooders. They're do -gooders. <laughs> Do batters, you know, they're the guys in prison. You know, the do gooders, they don't go to prison. They just, so they think, oh, what's good for the prisoners, you know, instead of just asking the prisoner. So they go, oh, well, here's the rock thing about uh, what's going on in our prisons is that uh, there's too many minorities, you know, uh, compared to, uh, to the majority, you know, it's just not, it doesn't make any sense, you know. Uh, young black men are being imprisoned at a, a, a terribly uh, wrong, uh, rate and uh, and also uh, uh, people are in there on minor drug charges like nonviolent offenses and uh, they stay in there far too long and these are the problems uh, with uh, prisons and this is what must be reformed now let's say uh, you said okay let's ask the prisoners you know we'll send a little uh, poll a little question we'll say Prison needs reform. What reform would you like in the prison? And um, they can write down uh, two. The top two. And I guarantee you, they would not get past one. Because they live in the prison, and, uh, you know, they would get back the, the okay, we got 200 piece of paper back from all the prisoners. Uh, they seem to all be in unison. Um, it's uh, the ass fucker. <laughs> <laughs> so number going. one and everybody. Most people just left number two blank. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Aaron, the guy doesn't even tell you when he's uh, sending you to prison. You know, he doesn't go like, oh, by the way, you're going to get raped every day. You know, <laughs> like when I, let's say, let's say, why are you even afraid of going? Why do you even do your taxes, you know? So you don't go to prison. Why do you not go to prison? What are you afraid of? Do you think people like have to go to prison next week are like, oh, God, oh, God, how am I going to survive the uh, lack of freedom? Oh my God, how am I going to survive being in a, locked in a cell and not seeing the sun and reading books and working out with barbells? <laughs> what are you thinking? It's like, uh, is it going to be, does it get any better after the first 500 times? <laughs> Maybe somebody would leave me their belt. <laughs> Dirty little secret. Not even a secret, everybody knows, but nobody cares. Because you know? they're just prisoners. They go, ah, let them get fucked. <laughs> they deserve it. Yeah, but they don't deserve it, you know? Because it's the, the guys that deserve it are the guys that are raping them, you know? <laughs> the bad guys. That's how you get to, the, you know, that's how you get power. Listen, you know the, the Me Too movement? Wait till it hits the prison system. <laughs> <laughs> Find some bad stories in there. 
Because as bad as we are out here, you know, we are bad. But, you know, men use, like, uh, power to get sex, right? But uh, in, in the prison, it's the opposite. They use, they rape in order to get power. Like, that's how they're, you know, that's how, oh, boy. Nobody, <laughs> nobody has looked on with more reverence in a, in a, in a prison system than uh, the best raper. <laughs> God damn, look at this time roll.
I think she'll get through uh, having the vice president uh, wish her well. Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> have to take time to get through those painful chapters. <laughs> But uh, there's going to be a lot of people coming out and saying, you know, they're. Uh, I've already seen a couple of these. Animals. You know, they're they're trying to get smart people at the start of an election cycle, so they'll be very kindly, like you know, a guy will come on, uh, or a lady. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, do a, they'll do a commercial, you know, and they'll say, listen. If you want to hear my views on uh, immigration and how I would handle it, as well as uh, the uh, terrible opioid crisis, as well as uh, children uh, uh, having to start their lives, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debts after school, well, you can come and visit my website, and I have a policy paper there. It's 35 pages long, and then I go, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> 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 you seem like a nice enough fella, and I don't mean to insult you or anything like that, but I will not be reading your policy paper. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I found out earlier today that I only get the one life. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two seasons of Matlock next to my couch. <laughs> So you can't do everything, you know. <laughs> you know, you don't know everything. That's the problem. You don't know a lot of stuff. You know, they'll, 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 sometimes you see that other people don't know, too, and you're not as bad. Like, they always have ads on, uh, like, uh, CNN or something like that. There'll be a question like, do you believe that the upcoming G7 conference will affect the Gulf of Tonkin? You know? <laughs> and then uh, it'll have, a, at the end of the program, it'll show you the results of the poll. They'll do it in a, in a pie chart, which is cool, for obvious reasons. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so it lands, it'll say like 45% yes, that'll be a big piece of the pie. 45% no, another big piece of the pie. And then a small piece of the pie, 10%. I don't know. And there's nothing wrong with that, I'll tell you. you know, I'm a, I mean, I'm a sucker for those polls, and I'll phone in any time I see my phone in. Yes, excuse me, is this the TV? Listen. <laughs> you asked a question. Okay, listen. I don't know. I say I don't know. I don't know the answer to the question that you asked. <laughs> Hey, but I got a question for you. How about that? I turn the tables on you, Sam. What do you think of that, huh? Okay, here's my question to you. What did the second word mean in your question to me? Let's <laughs> find me in a pie chart, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Red Bull, you know. Here's the, here's the thing, I, I look at this, I just thought. They say that uh, when you're really picking the president, you know how you think? You think you, uh, you're, you're, you ever hear like, uh, you, you know, about having two brains, you got your conscience brain, conscious brain, then you got another one behind it? <laughs> it's psycho psychology, you know. <laughs> so you got your one brain that does simple arithmetic. And then you got your other brain way back here, it's doing shit, you know, fucking all kinds of shit. It's not even asking you permission. Making decisions. So when you pick the president, right, you think you're using your brain with the man and shit, figuring everything out. You actually, you pick the person you'd most rather uh, have a beer with. Isn't that interesting? And, uh, which uh, kind of, uh, in a way, um, tells you a lot about last election, because who the fuck would want to have a beer with Hillary? You know? <laughs> <laughs> the longest beer of your life. <laughs> but, how fun would you have beer with uh, Donald Trump? You know? <laughs> Just be all like, ah! Have a golden throne, you said. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> really, man, give me a picture.
sure. This guy, what's that? He just, hey, he grabs him by the pussy. <laughs> Never thought of that, huh? Here's the thing, actually. I was a celebrity. I was on the TV. I remember that tape. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't think I'm... It's like that girl from Full House, you know? She got her kid into Yale or something, right? I don't know. She was Full House. I was on TV, you know? Uh, my kid is, uh, like, a retard, so... <laughs> School, and that was a <laughs> every school has a horse dealing really bad. <laughs> but yeah, I never took a, a advantage of any of that, you know, like the grabbing the pussy thing. I didn't know. Nobody told me that. You know, it's not like they tell you when you become a celebrity, oh, you grab a, you know, women by the pussy and they're cool with it. <laughs> My, my routine was always this, you know, when I was a celebrity and trying to get a lady. So my goal was, I'd see a lady, I'd go, man, I'm going to try to get her to let me lie down on top of her. <laughs> so I'd work on it, you know, I'd go, I'd buy her a beef steak, you know. Just, <laughs> tell her compliments, I'd tell her about her hair and stuff, how nice it was, and you know, I'd like her bangs and stuff. <laughs> I give her diamonds, handfuls of diamonds. And then finally, about it take about six weeks, but finally she would uh, she would uh, not let me lie down. And I'd, uh, I'd go home, you know, and uh, be sad. You know. But sometimes it worked. I'd say um, I stopped counting at about uh, eight. But I think it was nine. I think I got nine ladies to lie down. And I think that's real low for a celebrity. It's a low number, you know. But part of it is I, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm, you know, I, I'm not in like a, um, uh, like I'm not, like if I just meet a person and they hug me, I'm like, ah. You know, like, because I don't know the person that well. Like, with my cat, you know, I could, uh, you know, or my mother, I could hug her like that. But just a, a, a strange, like someone I met at uh, lunch, you know, four hours later, I can't be lying on top of her. I don't even think I could get my pants up. I mean, I, I remember one time I went out of a one night stand and I wasn't drunk, you know. And I don't know if you've ever gone to a one night stand dead sober, but oh my God. It's not a lot of fun. And, uh, so anyway, this girl was into it for some reason. Now, there's another thing. When a girl is into sex, boy, that's frightening, isn't it? <laughs> Because, you know, ladies, most ladies, you lie on, on top of them, and God bless them, they, they let you, you know, run around there for a while. They really are, you know, wonderful to, to go along with it, but it's unpleasant. It's highly unpleasant. And then once in a while, once in a while, you'll, uh, you'll run into a woman who, uh, who likes sex, and boy, that is terrifying. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's uh, disgusting, uh, disgusting. <laughs> Boy, sex is disgusting. I, you know, I'm always amazed that the bed, you know, the bed in your bedroom is the site of two things at the same time. It's where you sleep, you know, and escape the the hell of life, you know. <laughs> you dream of jelly rolls. <laughs> That's also the scene of just the most, uh, I can't describe, you know, you know what goes on. I'm sure you've been party to it once in a while yourself. And, you know, I'm not putting any judgments on anybody, but it's, it's 
pretty bad stuff. <laughs> But you do your best, you know. <laughs> a young man's game, you know. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it when you're old, you know what I mean? Make a fool of yourself. Okay. <laughs> like they always go, you know, you, you ever meet guys, oh, you should meet my uh, great aunt and uncle. They're 85 years old, but they still have a wonderful sex life. I go, how about I never meet them? <laughs> <laughs> But I create an app every time they're nearby, I vanish. Imagine you're 85, you know, it's hard enough to get an erection, you know. At any age, but 85 years old. 85 years old, you're trying to maintain an erection. Attain an erection. Then maintain an erection. And I'll tell you what doesn't help at all is an 85 year old woman. <laughs> You're like, Gertrude, can you go over there? <laughs> That's what booze is for. You know? <laughs> That's what's tough about not drinking, you know. Because booze allows you to do filthy wrong things. <laughs> not understand what they're wrong. <laughs> but uh, nobody's perfect. No, I don't lie down on top of ladies, but I still, I still uh, lie down with myself. You know, and that's, uh, the sun says it's just as bad. <laughs> Here's what I find out about when you lie down with yourself. Think of, think of the, the, the psychosis you have to somehow create, right? In order to believe something's happening that's not happening, right? Uh, to the, all the way to the extreme so you'll, you'll actually have uh, uh, some sort of Issue, you know. <laughs> and uh, can you imagine how, how uh, I mean, man, paranoid schizophrenics have a tough time getting to that level of uh, dissonance, you know. <laughs> Guy, guys have to do that. I'm not talking about women. You know, guys have to create an exact scenario in their head when they're lying down on themselves. <laughs> like, it's never, it can't be. They can't be lying down themselves, and in their thought bubble is them lying down themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Not even those guys on the top of the mountain with a big white beard, they can't do that. <laughs> they need to have a, in a scenario. And I'm just talking about guys. Women are different. I've asked them, I said, what do you do? You know, what do you think of when you lay down with yourself? You know, like, uh, the wind. You're like, oh. <laughs> They're more advanced. You know, a hammock. They'll say hammock. <laughs> well, like when women lay down with themselves, how about the how about the speed of their forefinger? <laughs> Good God, what kind of blur is that? It's like going so fast. You're like, what the fucking Christ? And then you're like, what was I doing? Because you know, you're like, how about this? <laughs> So I end up just stroking her hair. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right, Gertrude. Don't worry about it. So I need to think of two. This is what guys need to think of us. Exact scenario, and you know it's hard. You know what I mean? I haven't got a great like imagination. You know? Some guys can they can do it. They can lay down with themselves and think about you know Victoria's Secrets modeling so, or uh, you know Playboy playmates or something. But I can't do that, you know. I'll be, I'll be, you know, I'll be like, because uh, I've tried it before, you know. And in my head, I'm like, all right, why don't you take out your laundry? I'll show you a laundry. I don't know why. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> in regular life, I'm very nice. You know? <laughs> Try to trick them into letting me lie down on top of them. In my thing, where well, that's just not 
real. I guess I know that I can say it. I'm like, ah, I'm right at you. I'm going to show you underwear right now. And then she goes, no, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, why would you? Sorry. <laughs> I know deep down, you know, they're not going to want to do with me. Now, that, well, now, it's different though. Maybe I can't get the, the Victoria's Secret model. Maybe I can't get the Playboy bunnies. What about, what about that lady that uh, works in the 7 Eleven down the street from me? <laughs> not, not that easy on the eyes, I'll give you that. <laughs> but, uh, she's a large lady. <laughs> she uh, she could do it. She could she could lose two hundred pounds and still be alive. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But, but uh, she likes me. And that's the important thing. I uh, and I know she likes me because I was getting a, I was getting a sour cream and onion chips one day. And I, I, I put them down and she goes, I love sour cream and onion chips. I go, oh, that's cool. She goes, no, I really love them. And I look up, I'm like, <laughs> see in her eyes. And then I go home. So then for the next, like, two or three months, I'm doing the most disgusting things with her. Like, if she had known, she'd be horrified, you know, but she, there's no way she could know, you know. And, um, but I always felt guilty whenever I go get something. I go, here's my sour cream and She goes, how are you doing anyway? I'm like, nothing, whatever. Just <laughs> but um, the part I'm interested in, though, is the moment between when the psychosis is in full fever and then it breaks. You know, the fever breaks once this, this four seconds of... Uh, Oh, that's what happens, you know. These few drops that uh, search so desperately for. <laughs> Once they finally fall, uh, die. <laughs> then what happens, you know? Because all of a sudden, everything shifts. All reality shifts. Because you got to hurry, you know, you're like, ah, I'm in here. They give you a break, huh? 7-Eleven, why don't you come in here? What did you, you bring with you? Was that a friend of yours? Yeah, bring her in. So I got a recognize her. She works there too. All right, let's go. Ah! 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 And then you hear all this stuff. And then finally it's over, and that's the moment. Man, man, it's an odd moment. You're like, ah! ah! There's nobody here. Portland, Oregon. 
there. <laughs>
was it wasn't that a wonderful type of woman? You all know that woman. You know? My mother was like that. You know, she always always the last to eat. You know, she'd be in the kitchen making sure everybody had sex. She put a little to a plate for herself. Yeah. What everybody else you got? Are you all right? You need any more gravy? Oh, the turnips. <laughs> Getting everything ready, you know, and just here was her eyes would shine with love, you know. She's still with us, just you know no no irony has ever uh, shown up even as a fleck in any of her speech. She's a wonderful lady. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh I know, I don't want to suck her tits. <laughs> I reject this guy's idea wholesale. <laughs> and then I'm at dinner with him, now I got the glass of milk, I can't start guzzling it down. <laughs> Whatever. So my psychiatrist, oh, by the way, when I was having this dinner with the milk, right? Get, get this, it comes time for him to order, what does he order? Two meatballs and a banana. I'm like, hey. <laughs> 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 So if I, uh, psychiatrist, I go to the psychiatrist and this guy, what a broken record this guy is. All he ever says, this is him, this is my impression of him, stop taking fistfuls of LSD before every show. Man. Yeah. Now I like how he's the expert. I mean, you should, you should see this guy. He's a four foot blue giraffe. <laughs> he doesn't even have stops, you know. Not tall. He knows all about LSD, though. See, he's studied all those melting books behind. Him. <laughs> How are you, buddy? What do you do here in Portland? Yeah. Oh, you're a public school teacher. Preschool through six. And uh, what were the best ones? Preschool. They're the dumbest, right? <laughs> no, I mean, no, I just mean, it doesn't get progressively harder. Like, if you teach, like, grade one, you just need a grade two education. <laughs> so it's kind of. You <laughs> need more than that. You know, you need a way with the children and all that, and you don't have to know how to teach. So I just think like, stuff you have to learn. <laughs> All the way to grade six. Huh? They start getting in, they, they start getting troubles in grade six. You know, in preschool. Yeah, I can understand that. Because I remember when I was in preschool. Man, that was a bad, bad time. <laughs> I remember before preschool. Those were my first memories. Man, I'd be I go to Sean K's house, you know, and uh, and I show up and I go, Hey, Sean, I got a stick. And then that'll be the whole day. <laughs> Boy, we had so much fun. <laughs> and suddenly I was in kindergarten. I don't know how the hell I got there. There was a lot of tears. I remember that. And then I'm just looking out the window. I'm like, ah, what happened? Like, it was such a weird experience. <laughs> I could see the stick. You know? <laughs> and it was just so tough. You know, I was like, oh, God. I remember the, the first time that the weekend was coming. My first weekend was coming. Like the weekend, finally I can get back to real life with Sean Kay, you know, the stick. I go, this is great. And then the teacher goes, uh, oh yes, uh, 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 we're gonna uh, have some, send some problems home. You know, you got some problems. And they give me problems and then I would go, excuse me, just a point of order here. <laughs> the thing is this, I'm five years old and I don't have uh, any problems. <laughs> being five, you know, you don't have any problems. You, you know, you want to fuck the principal. <laughs> I don't know about your guys' problems, but me, I'm five, no problems. And the teacher, well, now you got them. Here you go. It's a big book full of problems. You got to solve them. Problems were a lot easier later when I found out that the answers were in the back of the book upside down. <laughs> Once you crack that code, you know, <laughs> upside down in the back of the book. You know, you know, 
I'm going to leave it with a joke because I think it's in my country. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I love this joke. I thought I'd tell it to you. Uh, and then I'll go. But you guys have been fantastic. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah. joke there is. I guarantee it. And it's not one of these jokes, you know, that stand-up sell where you, you know, they can't even repeat it. You gotta go to your buddy, hey, you, uh, I got a dog. You know, that doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, this is a joke joke where a guy says something, another fella, there's a bar, you know, and there's no bar, there's no, you know, you get the idea. <laughs> a, guy, a woman says to her boyfriend, hey, honey, does my ass look fat in this dress? And the guy says, now listen, uh, I'll be completely honest with you, that's what you want, but you have to promise me not to get angry no matter what I say. She goes, no, no, tell me. He goes, okay, I'm fucking your sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 